So here's my dark confession. I'm not a man who likes to harbor hatred in his heart, but the exception is mixed numbers. That's where I draw the line. I used to be a huge mixed number hater, but recently I've started to come around just a little bit. And so I thought it'd be interesting to do a video about why. A couple reasons I've started to warm up to mixed numbers, but I thought it'd be extra interesting to first run a little YouTube poll to see what you all think about mixed numbers. So let's take a quick look at those results. I was surprised how much the results pretty much agreed with me. I wasn't sure if this hatred was so universal. There are about 920 votes at least right now and 13% of people said they like mixed numbers. They prefer prefer to use them. And then it looks like, let me see, 23% of people said they sometimes use mixed numbers, so they're okay with them. And then an overwhelming 64% of people said that they hate mixed numbers and so presumably take a principled stance against using them. And that's exactly where I was. I hated mixed numbers so much I would brainwash my students to make sure they hated mixed numbers too. But one of the interesting things I saw in that poll was a lot of people commenting that they don't even know what a mixed number is. Turns out, outside of America, mixed numbers are just not as common. But in America, mixed numbers, I think, are the way that students first learn to deal with improper fractions. So improper fractions come later as a sort of advanced alternative to mixed numbers. What the mixed number is, for people who don't know, is taking a number and representing it as a whole and a fractional part. You're mixing them and expressing them slightly separately. So for example, you could take something like seven thirds this is an improper fraction, and this is the sort of thing where, you know, I'd say to my students, like, th this even being called an improper fraction, that's just propaganda from big mixed number, because there's nothing improper about it. It's beautiful. It's seven thirds. What's wrong with that? Of course, if you don't know, it's called improper because the numerator is greater than the denominator. So it's like improper because we're writing it as a fraction, even though there's some holes here. Well, if we write it as a mixed number, those holes get to be written separately. We could write it as a mixed number like this. Two, because there are two holes, three goes into seven twice, two with one third left over. That's writing seven thirds as a mixed number. It's a whole mixed with a fraction. Now, some of you, no doubt, are looking at this and saying, oh, that's what a mixed number is? <laughs> no wonder everybody hates them. Some of you are probably saying, oh, that's what a mixed number is? What's the big deal? At least among those of you who didn't know what mixed numbers are, but now we all know what mixed numbers are. Some of you are saying, just get on with it because we know what a mixed number is. Okay, well, great. We know what a mixed number is. So what's the big deal with mixed numbers? Why would people hate them so much? Well, I'd say the primary reason is their notational issues and ambiguity. When we first start learning about multiplication, we use the time symbol, which is typically an X. So if I wanted to do three times two, for example, I would write three and then a little X and then a two, and that's three times two, which is six. But once you get into seventh, eighth grade in the American education system, and you start doing real algebra, the X is typically reserved as a variable. And so the time is passed to use X as a multiplication symbol. And you gotta start using something else. The two traditional ways we get around that problem are using a dot for multiplication and just using adjacency. If two things are just written next to each other, then they must be getting multiplied. So we could write three times two as three times two, or in the case of just digits, we wouldn't write them directly next to each other like that because that just looks like the number 32, we would put them in parentheses. On the other hand, if we have a variable and I wanted to write something like 5x, then I don't need parentheses. We're supposed to read that as 5 times x because the 5 is next to the x. So that's how we would get around not having x as a multiplication symbol. Once you reach this point in mathematics, you actually don't get to use x as a multiplication symbol again until calculus three, when it comes back with a vengeance. Anyway, perhaps you can start to see where we run into problems with this more advanced multiplication notation and mixed numbers. 
particularly once we throw in fractions. So let's say I wanted to do two times a fifth. Probably what I would write is two with a dot and a fifth. You see, it's two times a fifth. But I mean, the dot is pretty small, and depending on your handwriting, it might be a little bit difficult to see that this is supposed to be multiplication. If you're reading this, how are you to know that this isn't a mixed number? It's not two and one fifth. Additionally, what if I just chose not to include the dot? What if I just wrote two and then a fifth next to it and expected you to read this as two times a fifth? Because I mean, they're next to each other, right? Well, I mean, at a certain point, we all just kind of agree to stop using mixed numbers, and so you wouldn't have to be that confused, but really, it's not super common to write something like that anyhow. So it's just a little weird, you know? You get a little ambiguity in this notation. I also think it's bad, not just for multiplication, where you can sort of flirt with that mixed number confusion, but also, I don't think negatives work so great with mixed numbers. Consider the mixed number three and two-fifths. What if I want to write that as a negative? You know, what if it is negative and I need to write that? So I say, okay, negative three and two fifths. Uh, but what the heck does that mean? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really look clear. Let's, let's think about this mixed number notation. If we just have positive three and two fifths, what does this really mean? Well, it's basically shorthand for addition, right? This mixed number notation, three and two fifths, is a shorthand for three plus two-fifths. So then, is negative three and two-fifths, is that equal to negative three plus two-fifths? That feels kind of weird. Or is it equal to negative three minus two-fifths, which also feels a little weird. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess it seems like it's usually equal to this one. Just based on seeing this appear in textbooks, I think this is the convention, that it's assumed the negative applies to both the whole and the fraction. But you probably agree with me that it's pretty ugly notation. Negative three, and then you just got two fifths over here, which is magically getting the negative also? I don't know. I don't like it at all. So, with all that trash talking done, with the record set straight, why don't we run a little bit of propaganda for Big Mix Number? What is there to like about Mix Numbers? I'd say there's two things. One thing is that it's so easy to look at a mixed number and instantly at a glance get a sense of its scale. For example, looking back over here, when I see the mixed number two and one third, I mean, I immediately know how big this is. It's two holes and one third. It's two and a little bit. It's 2.3 repeating. That's nice. On the other hand, if I look at seven thirds, I mean, those numbers are small and I do a lot of math, so I, you know, this means just as much to me as this, but, uh, you know, not everybody's like that, and if you get the numbers a little bigger, you can definitely see how the mixed number is just more quick at communicating exactly what it is. I mean, that's part of why this is used in, in cooking and, and practical things like that. Um, one and a fourth cups of flour makes more sense than five fourths cups of flour. You know, that's, that's kind of awkward. One and a fourth cups just breaks it down for you. I'm going to grab my cup, I'm going to scoop that, and then I'm going to grab my fourth cup and I'm going to scoop that. Easy peasy. So for people not great at mental math and for people maybe without a tremendous number sense, and just for people in general, it's a really nice easy way to get a sense of scale of an improper fraction. The improper fraction's just just not quite as obvious how big it is at a glance. The other reason, perhaps more significant, I like mixed numbers is honestly, sometimes they do just make the computations easier to keep some mixed numbers hanging out. Now I'm gonna try to move this paper down just to get some room without knocking all of my belongings over. So, so what do I mean about this easier computations? Well, really, it comes down to how big some of the numerators and stuff can get when you're using improper fractions. So I wrote out a nice little example to demonstrate this. Let's say we're doing 17 thirds, right? That's a big improper fraction. And we want to add 87 over eight. Let's say we do this without mixed numbers. We just keep everything in terms of improper fractions. Well, obviously we've got to get common denominators and the least common factor, or excuse me, the least common multiple of three and eight is 24. Okay, so I've got to multiply 17 over three by eight over eight. Obviously the denominator is gonna be 24, so we'll just put that down there. Now eight times 17, for me that's pretty easy. I like mental math, I do it a lot, it's fun. I, I feel committed a lot of times to not using a calculator. Even though I have one here, you know, it's just kind of fun and silly, but uh, 
you know, that, that's not that's not difficult for me. Uh, it's 136, right? Make sure I didn't screw that up. That'd be really embarrassing. Um, 136, no problem. But uh, obviously you could screw it up. The, the error is greater, right? We can just split this up as uh, eight times 10 is 80, plus eight times seven is 56. So 80 plus 56 is 136, right? But you gotta be sharp at that. And then I come over here to 87 over eight, and we need to multiply this by three over three to get that common denominator of 24. Again, I'm pretty good at mental math, and once you get a hang of it, it's pretty easy to do 87 times three. But you know, there is room for error there. You're juggling these double digit numbers becoming triple digit in your head. So three times 87, well, three times 80 is 240, three times seven is 21. Um, so it's gonna be 240 plus 21, so 261. And then I got these giant numbers up here, you know? I mean, they're not tremendously large, but if I'm just trying to run through a problem, um, you know, this can be a big impediment to my progress. Imagine you're a calculus student, you know, and you just did this big long integral. I mean, this is really where this stems from, where I started to realize this, is spending 40 minutes adding fractions uh, with an integral. It's a huge pain. I mean, okay, so now I got to add these triple digit numbers. Again, there's more room for error. It's not that hard, but there's more room for error. So 100, 200, that's 300, 30, 60, that's 90. So 390, six and one is seven. So 397 all over 24. Okay, so there we go. 397 over 24. And at a glance, how big is this? I mean, I don't know. It's like, what, 10, 20, somewhere between 10 and 20. Now let's try doing this again, but with mixed numbers and think about how easy it would be for someone who's not a grizzled veteran like me uh, to make a mistake doing it this way in comparison to the mixed number way. So if I do this the mixed number way, I'm immediately gonna turn these improper fractions to mixed numbers. 17 over three as a mixed number, well three goes into 17 five times with two left over. So it's five and two thirds. 87 over eight, eight goes into 80 10 times, sorry, sorry, eight goes into 87 10 times with seven left over. So it's plus 10 and seven eighths. So all that improper fraction stuff we did with common denominators, we're still gonna have to do that here, but we have to do it with much smaller fractions, two thirds and seven eighths. Plus, I already have a decent idea of how big this number is. Five, 10, okay, 15, and then this probably adds to at least another one, so it's 16 and change. Easy, look at that. But to finish this up with the mixed number strategy, I'd combine the holes to get 15, and then I kinda have to abandon the mixed number notation here while I get common denominators. I know that the common denominator is gonna be 24, and then two over three, I'm gonna multiply by eight over eight, and that's so easy. I mean, I'm never screwing that up, right? Even if I just, I know my multiplication table, but maybe I'm not great at mental math in general. I mean, I'm probably not screwing this up. Eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24, no problemo. Over here, I'm doing three over three, and I get 21. I mean, that's easy. That's cake city is what we call that. And so then I have 15 uh, plus 37 over 24. And then if I like, I can turn this into mixed number notation and write it as 15 and 37 over 24. Uh, oh, but we actually see that there's another hole there. 24 goes into 37 once. So that brings me up to 16 uh, with let's see, 13 left over, 13 over 24. Now, if I wanna take this and at this stage, turn this into an improper fraction, I do have a harder multiplication problem um, than I had at any step here, because then I'd have to do 16 times 24. Um, but that's not too bad. If I actually had to do that, I'd probably just say there's four, uh, there's two factors of four and 16. So I would just do 24 times four and then 24 times four again. And you could break that into multiplication by two uh, if you needed to. Now, I hope you see my point and I hope you're saying, well, some of you are saying, Okay, I, I see what you mean, but you still don't have to use mixed number notation. This awful, hideous, evil notation, uh, I, I see what you're saying, but you still don't have to use that. You could just put a plus here, right? Five plus two thirds, 10 plus seven eighths. There's nothing stopping me from just deciding I wanna get those holes out, the five and the 10, and just keep them separate. And I don't have to use mixed number notation to do that. And that's true, but if you're gonna do the math this way, I mean, the mixed number notation is kinda handy just so I don't have to write the plus. And again, it's not like we really write multiplication this way. I can't say I've ever seen somebody write a whole number times a fraction in what would appear as mixed number notation. Um, 
Now, of course, maybe someone would, but ultimately I'm talking about your own personal work, right? When you're doing computations by hand, um, I just think this could be a little handy sometimes, and I certainly find myself using mixed numbers on occasion, especially with definite integrals these days. Like, I'm sorry, but when I got a million of these things, you know, these improper fractions, and maybe, you know, a bunch of different denominators, and the least common multiple is three digits long, and my numerators are racking up to the tens of thousands, and I'm steadfastly saying I'm not gonna use a calculator, I ain't doing it. I'm using mixed numbers. That's just what I'm doing. And so, so what? What? <laughs>